uh, even what he has will be taken away. So that means he's not productively using his skills and talents. So, you know, uh, you know, so glad to serve you all and really excited. So let's get ahead with today's teaching. It's going to be really awesome. I'm going to share to you uh, the screen. Let's go forward. Right. Okay, friends, you know, today, as you're seeing, you know, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation made ready, but these are my sermon notes. Okay. So, uh, you know, out of uh, the teaching sessions I take. So from the sermon notes, I'm going to explain it to you. Okay. And it's not a theme or it's not like a Christmas theme. Please pardon me. Maybe next time or so I can bring a Christmas theme. Uh, th this is something, you know, I, I uh, kind of follow. Okay. Whatever comes in my heart, uh, you know, that thing which moves in my mind and my heart, I think that it should be presented to uh, the body of Christ. So that's how. So uh, some days back, I was sitting on this and I was meditating on this words. And then I drew this, I wrote down the sermon notes. And this is how I prepare. Probably it will help some of you in knowing and understanding how to do an exposition of God's word. It's like, you know, I take the views of, you know, some, some commentaries and, you know, uh, like the commentary of Johnson, Matthew Henry and uh, people like that. So I, I read those commentaries and then I come to my own conclusions and then I put things together. And uh, something which uh, is impressed on my heart by the Holy Spirit, so I take that and then I elaborate it into a sermon notes and then... Uh, if you further refine it, it goes like that. So today, like I'm prompted to preach to you all or teach to you all about a faith life, uh, how it works and what are the dynamics of faith life. It's going to be exciting. Okay, now listen, uh, Galatians chapter 3 verse 5 says, Therefore he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among, among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So quite obviously what Paul is saying to the Galatians is that it's not about law, it's all about faith. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing uh, by the word of God. And, uh, you know, this is something, you know, very crucial to all of us Christians. Uh, the divine faith that, work, that can work miracles, how does it come? It comes when you study, read, listen to videos and, you know, sermons. And, and then something strikes you and then you pick up on that and then your faith increases and then the miracle follows. So it, it's like that. So it's hearing and listening, you know, cautiously. It's very important for our faith life to work. So I've been living a faith life for the past 15 years. And uh, it's uh, after quitting my job in IT, I was a banking financial services industry expert, BFSI expert. So I'm an expert in banking, uh, in retail banking and mutual funds. So, but I quit my uh, job uh, to serve the Lord because that's what my passion. And then, you know, so, you know, I've been living a faith life. So learned so many things. So uh, uh, today I want to share certain things from the scriptures about a wonderful faith life. The book of Galatians is a wonderful book. It talks about faith, grace. And there's a battle between the Galatians about the law and the faith. And sometimes uh, they are kind of topsy-turvy and they are kind of shaky. And sometimes they go towards law and sometimes they go towards faith. And there are battles, real battles going on. Now, listen to this. So I've compiled a table over here. The differences between law and faith. Law is a religious system and faith is a completely uh, spiritual by nature. You know, the second thing. Law can be felt, understood. It's clear and concise. So there is no confusion when it comes to law. It's clearly defined. You know, this is what you do. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. That's it. And then you can feel it. You can understand it. You can touch it. It's quite clear. It's quite concise. But about faith life, you know, I've been living 15 years and still, I'm still learning many things about faith. Okay, so it's quite complicated Okay, it's abstract, it's intangible, it's mysterious in nature. It must be explored and there is no law that governs it. So it's, it's a matter of experience. Wow, but it's beautiful and Bible calls us to live a life of faith, my dear friends. Hallelujah. 
okay so law has to be maintained if 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 it is not it can be easily broken so the old testament people they followed a particular law this month and they broke it at the next month okay and then they went to the priest okay and then they and they said oh we failed in observing the law and then the priest had to make atonement so it's not so with faith it need not be maintained it cannot be broken oh what a beautiful thing about faith it is supported by the holy spirit hallelujah wow the holy spirit it he he holds your faith once you keep your faith the holy spirit takes control and then you know he challenges and he moves he makes that faith to complete i like this verse i like this verse friends i tell you i like this verse it says romans uh, uh, hebrews chapter 5 he says jesus christ is the author of faith and then he's a finisher of faith wow praise god so he's the author of faith and he's a finisher of faith so and i don't think our jesus if he started faith in your life he would stop it abruptly no he's going to finish it so it is supported by the holy spirit it is backed up by jesus and uh, he is the author and the finisher of faith so not to worry my friends faith is beautiful you know may this new year you know increase your faith muscles like crazy and make you very strong in your faith okay and law gives birth to sin and guilt but faith produces grace not guilt it produces fruits that last for a lifetime now this is my experience i tell you you know i've been uh, uh, you know those days i was a missionary and uh, now uh, uh, like you know the uh, kind of when i was a missionary everything came by faith okay so i i i kind of you know uh, practiced faith in getting a bike for myself okay and god i got a bike you know completely by faith and you know what I, i'll tell you the beauty of it what came by faith it can never leave me because i tell you you know so many things came on that bike sometimes it used to break down sometimes it had no petrol believe me it had no petrol and uh, i was in the midst of you know far different distances forest areas i used to minister healing deliverance and return and the petrol used to be out and no uh, petrol pumps and all that you know uh, but still i used to lay my hands on the petrol uh, tank and pray and it used to start okay so the umpteen number of miracles which happened you know with that faith bike which i got you know so it's like a memoir today i have in with me you know so it's beautiful my friends what comes by faith it doesn't leave you easily it stays for a long time hallelujah okay so the circumcision was a badge and the evidence of abraham's faith but you know neither circumcision or uh compare it, if you compare the circumcision to the new testament baptism is a badge and evidence of a believer's faith today and uh, but they are outward evidences of an inward work okay so that's the teaching okay so my friends uh, here let me stop here and it's beautiful it's going to go more deep more exciting okay and as we explore many more things it's going to become wonderful tonight so I, i will i will like to stop here and let's pray for the christmas season it's a beautiful season i want someone to please come forward and also pray for what we learned today and pray for the christmas season you know god should bless our church we should reach out uh, the programs which are there uh, outreach programs god should bless them please come forward thank you dear lord our loving gracious heavenly father we thank you for this time lord thank you for speaking to us lord through thy servant Lord, help us not to be only hearers and talkers, Lord, but help us to be doers of your word in the very true sense of it, Lord. Lord, we also pray for this season, Lord, as it's a golden opportunity, Lord, to share thy word. Yes, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would, Lord, enable each one of us, Lord, to go all out, Lord, to share your gospel, Lord, the good news. Lord, we ask this in the most... precious and matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen, amen. thank you uncle it was so nice to see you brother uh, and james uncle may god bless your prayer and may god answer it and uh, may you be blessed and tara auntie god bless you all god thank bless you. your prayer <laughs> thank you okay so friends 
it's going to be exciting more exciting today okay so uh, we were talking about faith and we talked about the law and the faith and let me take a illustration from the life of abraham who's actually the father of faith okay uh, li listen to this okay genesis chapter 15 was 8 you know melchizedek king of salem he brought bread and wine and he was a priest of the most high god he blessed abraham you know and uh, uh, just concentrate on those things which are highlighted in yellow okay and he gave a tithe uh, abraham gave a tithe you know to uh, melchizedek and uh, now melchizedek was a king of salem which is now actually jerusalem which is actually a, a type of jesus christ okay so he was the type of jesus christ okay so now the king of sodom also came to abraham and uh, since abraham had a great victory with lot's deliverance you know and king of sodom said give me the person and i will give you the plunder and i will give you the goods but abraham said to the king of sodom i have raised my hand to the lord that i will not take from you you know a needle or a thread because later on you will say i have made abraham rich now 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 wait for it okay it's going to go more interesting i promise to you okay let's see this table it says the difference between the king of salem and the king of sodom okay now there are two kings over here uh, uh, in genesis chapter 14 verse uh, 50 17 onwards there are two kings one is a king of salem and the other is a king of sodom and listen each one what did they do to abraham and what did abraham do to them okay the king of salem he brought no concentrate on the thing which is underlined he brought he brought bread and wine oh, it it signifies our jesus christ who gave us bread and wine oh my god oh this is too much awesome isn't it too much is it isn't it so wonderful you know and in fact we give tithes to uh, our high king high priest okay so it's like that now sodom the king of sodom he also brought but what did he bring okay he did not bring bread and wine okay he brought riches and plenty of goods that means the plunder he said uh, give me the people i'll make you rich i will bless you with plunder with with all the goods have it as as much as you like and now look at the second part the king of salem he offered blessings to abraham but king of sodom he never talked about any blessings he never talked he only talked about giving riches to abraham and the king of salem now look at this the underlined part that he received tithes and look at the king of sodom he wanted to receive pride of making abraham rich you know my friends doesn't it remind you about jesus you know and satan now look at that now you put the king of salem as jesus and the king of sodom as the world system or satan okay uh jesus christ brings to you spiritual blessings oh wow can i see you you know come on using your expressions okay for a thumbs up jesus christ gives you spiritual blessings hallelujah he gives you his body and his blood but you know satan he offers you riches that's what he did to jesus also he said all the world given to me if you give i'll give to you okay and satan offers no spiritual blessings and look at this you know now jesus christ you know so uh, you know he uh, the the devil wants to receive pride from us you know he wants he, there is a sinister what he called motive of satan you know behind making us rich and famous it's it's because you know to trap us into the world system so my friends you know even abraham was also blessed by god but the blessing that king of sodom gave it was for a sinister motive you know my friends hallelujah i know today that you are convinced you know how important it is for us to keep our faith in the king of salem jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah okay so that brings me to my second prayer point please someone come forward pray for whatever we have learned so far and also pray for please the vaccine and uh, like pastor scott said you know uh, it was a beautiful sermon this sunday we we enjoyed so much okay it was from his heart you know and uh, what he called uh, what he said is december before the christmas season the vaccine may come out 
So let's pray as early as possible. Effective vaccine should come on. Someone, please come forward. Remember to pray for what we learned also. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Father God, for teaching us about the difference between uh, your blessings, what you give us, and what uh, the world had to offer us. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Help us to have enough faith, Lord Jesus, to receive your blessings and to receive what you have kept in store for us, Father God. And, and Lord, you have given us everything, Father God. You have given us yourself, Father God. We thank you. You have given us the bread and the wine, Father God. We thank you, Jesus. And Lord, help us to help us to exercise the faith that you have given us to receive more from you and 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 just just be a blessing to others, Father God. Lord, I also pray for this vaccination, Father God. We have been praying for it, Lord, and you are a faithful, Father God. We thank you for the news that we hear about this vaccine, Lord Jesus, Father. We thank you, and we pray, Father God, that that it would be available to all of us um, in the right time, and and we will have access to receive it and lord we thank you for protecting us with the precious blood of jesus so far father god it is it is just your faithfulness lord which is which is undeniable to to just protect us and 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 keep us uh, in your promises father we thank you and we receive everything and we give you all the glory and honor in jesus name amen amen oh thank you so much sister shirin god bless you uh, i think that was shirin right you know, if I'm right, or Nancy. Yes, brother. Oh, yeah, it was Shirin. Thank you so much, Sister Shirin. God bless you. You know, uh, thank you for that prayer. May God bless and answer your prayer. So, my friends, you know, I tell you, ah, we are plunging deep in the world. It's it's a it's a deep experience, a deep plunge. You know, it's gonna be exciting, more exciting as we go deeper and deeper. I'll you know the I see I tell you. See, the word of God is like this, okay? You know, it's not so simple as you read it. It's not so simple. You know, don't be... When you sit down for your personal Bible study, don't be satisfied just touching the uh, you know surface. No. Oh, no. You yarn for that deep craving, okay? Because every single verse is goes so deep. And I'm telling you, the next session is going to be deeper, okay? Now, listen. <coughs> Excuse me. Genesis chapter 14, verse 22, Abraham says to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord. Oh my God, this is awesome. This is awesome. What is Abraham meaning by uh, telling that? You know, here you see the integrity of Abraham. You know, the integrity of Abraham. He's offered riches by the king of Sodom, <coughs> but he refuses to take the uh, riches. And he says that, I have raised my hand to the Lord. You know, uh, so... I was just thinking, comparing other versions, you know, trying to find out what, what this verse means. It means that Abraham is telling, saying that I have promised to the Lord that he will be my provider. He will be my reward. He will be my portion. He will be my master and nobody else. You know, my friends, the beautiful part of this entire thing is Abraham is very clear on uh, the objectives of his life is very clear. Sometimes we are not clear. That That's where the entire problem comes. Abraham is very clear that he will live by faith. His reward will be God. His providence will be God. His master will be God and not man. He's very clear. He's very clear. That's the beautiful thing I love about our daddy Abraham. Oh, wow. He is very clear on what he believes. Some of us, we are not clear. That's a problem. We are not clear that, oh, is God my come my provider, whole and soul provider I'm talking. Is God my reward, whole and soul reward? Is God my portion, whole and soul, my master? You know, hallelujah. My Adonai, you know, Adonai itself is called as master. That means he has complete authority over you and you are his servant. You know, my friends, oh my God, you know, that's what Abraham is saying to the king of Sodom, saying that I have raised my hand to the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this is the key of faith, faith life. No one should take God's position in our lives. 
that they are the reason for our victory for our sustenance for our source and for our blessing it must be christ and that is the life of faith hallelujah hallelujah you know my friends nobody should take the credit nobody should take the glory in fact 1 corinthians chapter 1 verse number 29 says no flesh shall glory in the presence of the lord yes you know sometimes even i am scared sometimes if people talk too much they, uh, you know brother sumi the pastor sumi uh, this is uh, i just avoid why because i don't want to take god's glory even by a centimeter you know i some, uh, sometimes i run off from my birthday because people make it too much so you know i just avoid over my disciples i say that please make it very humble soft okay so you know my friends why because we don't want to touch god's glory we want we don't want to take his his place hallelujah he, he to him belongs all the glory all the honor and all the praise hallelujah so my friends you know the that's that is the beauty of the faith life okay and look look at this okay now it, it goes more interesting i'm excited today look at this okay now abraham he says to god he says to the king of sodom i have raised my hand to the lord that means he says that i have raised that he will only be my master not you you are not going to provide me the money and make me rich my jesus is going to provide my jesus is my master i will depend only on him and you know what is this the next thing the next thing oh god listen to me again the next thing god spoke to abraham in a vision immediately after that and you know what said what god said abraham don't be afraid i am your shield your reward will be great oh my god i am your exceedingly great reward that means god acknowledges the integrity of abraham that means god says to abraham abraham what you did is very right you professed your faith before the people of the world and before satan the king of sodom that i am your provider i am your master therefore i will be the reward oh my god i know it's too much it, it, it i i don't know it blows my mind out you know listen to this how smart or how beautiful the mind of abraham is you know my friends if sodom the king of sodom was his reward now look at this please i don't know how many of you are following me carefully listen if sodom the king of sodom was abraham's reward then his blessing would have been only limited to the plunder that he received from the king of sodom's victory it would have only be little but since abraham said you are not my master you are not my reward but god is my reward abraham's blessings are going to be god sized oh my god jesus hallelujah hallelujah it's awesome what do you call in english it's mind blowing hallelujah it blows our mind out god is going to reward abraham according to the riches in his glory oh 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 wow wow wow, wow. It, it's beautiful it's beautiful it's beautiful god is going to reward to abraham if if abraham did the mistake of telling to sodom saying that you are my reward he would have got only this much riches but since he said god is my reward you know what god does he brings now let's go to the next part it's so interesting my friends you will sit there and you will fall on your knees and you will cry to god oh my god you will say lord i'm not able to hold this revelation he brings abraham outside and he shows to abraham since you said i am your master since you said that you are depending on me and i will be your reward i will be your shield now look up look up abraham this is the god sized blessing that i'm going to bless you he is saying to abraham he is saying to abraham look at the stars if you can count them your descendants shall be so many hallelujah praise god praise god praise god praise god now look at this if it happens with you if you tell to god saying god it's not it's it's not my boss who is my reward it's not my job who is my reward it's not it's not the people who is my reward it's not my father who is my reward earthly father who is my reward it's not you know the little things the properties or whatever they are not my reward but you 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 are my adonai you are my master just imagine your blessings he is going to do the same thing to you if god blesses his portion his his blessing style is completely different not like our uh, human style 
it will be god's time praise god god's time our blessings are going to explode like crazy hallelujah how many of you all want that crazy blessing so this brings to our third important prayer point okay so pray you know like for a better world for you know a peace of peaceful world okay pray for the elections that are happening tomorrow in the city of hyderabad and pray for our government you know the indian government pray that such kind of pandemics will never arise ever again and no wars will take place pray for the kingdom of god to come on this earth somebody please come forward yeah we have little time please come forward quickly thank you and pray for also whatever we learned thank you lord heavenly father i thank you for this prayer time oh lord lord thank you for bringing us all together and pray and pray you and worship you oh lord and seek your blessings oh lord jesus lord i just pray oh lord that you will take care of all of us oh lord and no pandemics and nothing a situation with mankind situation will ever arise on this earth oh lord jesus lord such trouble which we are facing now because of some people's uh, you know wrong doing and some people's uh, bad mind oh lord jesus i break such feelings and the minds of the people oh lord no mind will ever think of such disaster on this earth oh lord jesus the name of jesus i pray lord bring peace peace in people's lives oh lord i pray oh lord you occupy every every one's heart and every one's mind oh lord jesus on this earth oh lord jesus so that we human beings will never have to face such pandemics never have to face such problems oh lord jesus and we shall grow we we will be okay hello hello is is she there extremely extremely sorry you know i just lost the this one okay we'll continue with the teaching okay yeah thank you so thank you sister shilpa for that prayer god bless you okay so uh, the, some network issue okay now my friends now look at this okay uh faith can lead us to unlimited blessings the word preached brings faith you know saying an amen is processing faith to believe in the word you know what when god spoke the word now listen here you know it's it's going to be really exciting because when god spoke the word to abraham once again i repeat he spoke the word and what was the word look at the skies if you can count the stars your descendants will be as many as the stars innumerable in number so that was the word that was spoken by god and when abraham believed it accounted for righteousness you know my friends that teaches another principle of faith that you have to believe the word you have to believe your bible which is in your hands when you believe the bible it will be accounted to you is back okay is back i i'm really sorry you know i'm just losing uh, the yeah. connection uh, don't, don't be sorry it's fine it's fine it's only a second no problem yeah pass i'm just ending it's the last point okay Fantastic. yeah yeah so my friends when you believe the word of god it, it shall be accounted to you as righteousness it's like when you're believing the word you are saying an amen in your heart to the promises of god that's what abraham did you know when god spoke the word in his heart he believed and it went it became an amen and eventually he got blessed but you know my friends now look at this i'm going to pre teach to you another important caution you know about the mistake that abraham did and he suffered also uh, because of that he was very much in faith when god showed him the stars but you know when god said you know i am going to give you this as an inheritance he expressed unbelief in verse 8 he said oh lord how shall i know that i will inherit it you know so here he expressed his doubt he expressed his unbelief you know my friends you know sometimes we can be full of faith and the very next day we may be full of unbelief you know this is very common in life you know this is very common sometimes take for me even elijah if you see he was so full of faith 
he brought down the fire killed the 350 prophets of baal but the very next minute you know he's telling i want to die it it happens with all of us sometimes we are so full of faith we are preaching on the sunday and we are you know we are excited and all that but the next minute something happens in our life we are so down but you know my friends uh don't worry even when we are faithless god is faithful hallelujah praise the lord even when we are faithless god is faithful you know so this is the this is the key always be positive positivity attracts blessing and negativity a curse be very optimist now listen listen at this i am closing very quickly okay now to prove to abraham that he really wanted to bless abraham god made a covenant with abraham because he said how shall i inherit the blessing how will i know you know and he expressed his doubt and unbelief so god said okay let's make a covenant and he brought uh, he asked him to make a sacrifice you know there's a different teaching on the covenant part which i cannot cover this today but you know look at this you know but justice required that look at this justice required that abraham's faith will be accounted as righteousness but unbelief also will be accounted as unrighteousness too and that's why abraham was punished because of his unbelief the word which he said how shall i inherit and you know what it was god you know said in genesis chapter 15 verse 13 he said no certainly that your descendants will be as strangers in the land in a foreign land and they will serve some uh, ad- some other people and they will afflict them for 400 years so he was blessed but even for expressing a small doubt or uh, of unbelief he was also punished you know my friends you know even we see luke chapter 1 when the angel pronounced a news to zacharia he did not believe it and many did not believe it immediately became dumb so my friends you know it's like you know i i uh like it's an encouragement to you always be po- uh po- optimistic always be positive you know sometimes we christians are sometimes uh misusing our tongue you know we always talk negative sometimes it happens like this to me it always happens like no my friends you are blessed you will remain blessed god has blessed you in heavenly places you will definitely be healed god's word has promised the richest blessings to you and you know like god's blessings are god sized in in your life so always believe believe whatever be your situation even if you are down you know just believe that things will be better and that will be good that's what this teaching says you know 400 years the descendants of abraham were as slaves in egypt so my friends you know let us never express our unbelief but always be full of faith so i am done with this teaching thank you so much over to pastor ben uh, thank you samit that's great and um you know faith is so important and there's so much to it there's so much you can learn about faith and so much to grow and develop in the areas of faith i mean there's so many different types of faith um it's so it's very important that we uh, do that the bible says